Hi there everybody, time for me to uh, comment on your comments and I believe we're going to start with Arvin Ellis. Hello dear teacher, my friend recently recommended your channel to me. I've been looking for good channels on YouTube for a very long time to improve my English, but alas there are very few of them. However, your channel is such a gem. I've already watched some of your videos. You put a lot of effort into them. But Perh perhaps this is what makes your channel unique. Thank you. My pleasure. And Arvin again. Over the years I had been thinking that my neighbour was in a depression. I would probably say was depressed. Because I had barely seen him outside or him showing any signs of life as his garden is always unkempt and lights were almost always off every night. But it turned out that he was practicing a Spartan lifestyle. A good example, Arvin. Well done. And Manneking. His bad health morphs into a disease. Okay. A baby morphs into an adult. Good. A happy-go-lucky man morphs or morphed into a depressed man when he got married. A happy kid morphs morphed into an angry kid let's see what your business morphed into be careful of these little details mannequin and hussein hi hussein hello teacher how are you can you tell me which accent is popular and widely spoken in england also i'd like to know why people from the upper class society tend to speak more crisply and pronounce words more precisely than working class people okay hussein in the uk there are two accents you've got rp which i speak which is probably spoken by i don't know 30 percent of the population and then you've got estuary this working class accent uh, which is completely different I want a glass of water I want a glass of water um, so it's just it, it, it's just the way things are um, let's see I would instead of upper class society I would say middle class society M most middle class people use the this RP accent but to to survive in the UK you need to be able to speak and understand both yeah mine is easy but uh, if uh, if you meet somebody who uh, speaks with a very closed uh, estuary accent, you might find it much more difficult. Okay, and mannequin. What is the demarcation of the insult? Not to talk about family. So, what is the demarcation of an insult? Yeah, what demarcates an insult? talking about the family or not. Okay, mannequin. And VG. By the way, saying I felt like quite a willy, yes, the word willy would sound very funny, and you know why. Absolutely. I, I mean, I guess you could say it, but Wally is much, much more common. Hi, Sheed. Great. Great to have you. In antiquity, Sparta, city located in Laconia, southeastern peninsula of Greece, was well known for providing fierce and stout warriors. Good words. The city became dominant in 450 BC. Its rival was Athens, and the war between these two cities is known as the Peloponnesian War, 431 to 404 BC. Male Spartan citizens were soldiers and nothing else. Boys started a military training at the age of seven and had to live under austere conditions until twenty. They retired at sixty. Women were independent-minded and received a formal education. They were engaged in sporting competitions. Uh, daily chores were done by the Heliots, captives who were servants. That's pretty good. So, sporting com competitions. But good, good work. Well done, Sheed. And Hussein. 
A tortilla is not the usual Spartan disc, but a rugged fritter laced with green onion and tasting like a Chinese scallion pancake or fringe of crunchy with a fringe of crunchy bubbles. Okay, firstly, Hussein, tortilla is a it's a Spanish word. Yeah, um, in Spain, a tortilla is probably about that thick, and it's made of egg onions and potatoes, the majority potatoes. It can be very, very tasty as well. So, thank you, Hussein. And Hussein, at the age of seven, Spartan boys were taken from their parents' homes and began the Agoge, a state-sponsored training regime, regimen, regime, uh, design regimen, yeah, to mould them into seasoned warriors and moral citizens. Separated from their family and housed in communal barracks, the young soldiers in waiting were instructed in scholastics, warfare, uh, stealth, hunting and athletics. At age 12, initiates were deprived of all clothing save a red cloak and forced to sleep outside and make their own beds from reeds. To ready them for a life in the field, the boy soldiers were also encouraged to scavenge and even steal their food, though if detected they were punished with floggings. Just as all Spartan men were expected to be fighters, all women were expected to bear children. Spartan girls were allowed to remain with their parents, but they were also subjected to a rigorous education and training program. While the boys were readied for a campaign life, girls practiced dance, gymnastics and javelin and discus throwing, which were thought to make them physically strong for motherhood. That's a really nice piece of writing, Hussein. Thank you very much also for all this information. That's really good. Good work, Hussein. And Rizgar, Piffle. Balderdash, bunkum, claptrap, nonsense, drivel, piffle, poppycock, twaddle, baloney, rubbish, trash, bilge, filth, hooey. <laughs> That's really good. Thank you, Rizgar. And VG says, I appreciate that. And Mohammed says, thanks, sir. And VG, sir, could you also explain the difference between sign and signal in your next answering comments video? I've already watched your videos about these two words, but I didn't get it much. Thanks in advance. Um, I hope that you like the adjective I've just invented. Your next answering comments video. Yeah, it's great. It's, that's very, uh, it's typical of what the, the British do, yeah, like human rights movement. Absolutely, a uh, human rights movement is a, is a perfectly valid coll collocation. Oof. Okay, sign and signal. Firstly, these two words are incredibly close. Let's see, I, I think a sign, the nuance is, it's a general indication of something. It warns you or advises you about something. So, for example, you would have a, a pub sign giving the name of the pub or a sign saying, um, uh, do not walk on the grass. Whereas a signal is something that uh, indicates something at a specific moment. He gave me the signal to start. Yeah, he signaled me to come here. Yeah, so a, a signal is saying it's time to start something, whereas a sign is much more a general piece of information. And, and I think that's the difference. Yeah, um, this was the uh, signal to begin running. Yeah, so when they when they have a, a running race and this gun bang, yeah, that's the signal to start. Whereas maybe there are lots of advertising signs, information around the edge. The sign even may give you information about what the starting signal is. And I think that's the difference, VG. I hope that's helped. And. Yeah. Is it a conversions or a joining of virtual reality? I would say it is c a conversion of uh, uh, it, it is the, 
the coming together, the conversion, not even conversion or adjoining, the, I would say, the coming together of virtual reality and physical reality. Yeah, this is the metaverse. Uh, it's becoming a mixture of the two things. Thank you very much. And... Yeah. Okay, it's a... Com okay, and... Yeah. Do bees really go to the loo? Like, really, really, really? Yes, they do. <laughs> Believe it or not, the bees fertilize my garden. Yeah, bees do go to the loo, very, very definitely. They go out to go to the loo um, because they don't do it in their hives. <laughs> you see? <laughs> there are even calculations about how much uh, excrement a hive of bees produces. It's quite amazing, some of the things. Thank you, sir. Much obliged. It's lovely to see you, Manji. My pleasure. And Mohammed, I guess this is music. I'll have to listen to them later. Thank you, Mr. Music Man. And 40 Love, Cognizant, Knowledge, Awareness, Acknowledgement, Jurisdiction. Take co cognizance of a legal term. His direct cognizance of this matter was denied. Yeah, he denied direct cognizance of this matter, I think I would say. The court has cognizance in this matter. Yes, jurisdiction. He sent me cognizance of my payment. Yeah, his cognizance in the English language is very deep. Formality. 7.5, yes. Yeah. A very great work. So thank you, Mohammed, and I shall listen when I get time later. And another one to thank you for. So, P. Hi, P. <laughs> Good to see you. Okay, seem to you... Uh, Thanks for everything, Alex Henry. Much, much, much obliged. I love the way everyone's using this much obliged phrase. I, I really like it. It's much more British. And Fran, hi Fran. Great to see you. I hope you're well. If you have to spend if I have to spend my whole life learning English, so be it. Good usage. Unfortunately, it's a difficult language. Good English, Fran. If we have to wear masks un until 2025, so, so be it. No choice, unfortunately. You're quite right, Fran. Yeah, many things, so be it. We just have to do it. And Vibes, thank you for answering my question. 26. Around here, what expression did you use? Go the whole hog. In for a penny, in for a pound. Edit. I listened to it again with earphones and got it now. It was in for a penny, in for a pound. Yes, you got it. OK, thank you, Mohammed. And wish I'd known you 10 years ago, sir. I wish I'd known you too. And Amin. Hi, Amin. Now I see why my dad used to tell me that I shouldn't mix grape and grain when I'm drinking in a party. Very good. Yeah, this is definitely a synecdoche. Very good example, Amin. And Dottie. Hi, Dottie. I always say aluminium despite living in the US my entire life because it's in my mum's language, Portuguese. They also say aluminium. Plus, it bothers my boyfriend. Huh. OK, yes, in, in European, let's see, I'm thinking in Spanish, aluminio, definitely. OK, what is shenanigans? From And AK says, hello, Victor, Sh shenanigans means some dishonest and illegal activities. Very good definition, Sh AK, I love it. And thanks for the correction, it's very welcome, that's good. And Mohammed, OK. Egypt's, Egypt's strongest weapon is its soft power in singing and music. And to be convinced of this, you must navigate the oceans of art, language and, mu and music and study art <laughs> and music and study art history. But you can imagine that these are Jews in is but can you imagine that these are Jews in Israel singing and dancing to an Egyptian song, Um Kulthum, sixty years ago. I definitely got to watch this one. And Fran, hi Fran. If I won a hundred thousand euros, I'd be jabbering big time. Yeah, that's good use of jabber. I like it, Fran. And trance good. Sufficient explanation. Thanks. So great to have you, trance good. And, huh, 
The SES in metamorphoses is pronounced seas, like the words seas and seas. He sees the seas in order to distinguish from the metamorphosis, which is pronounced cis, cis, as in sister, system. Basically the same difference between the pronunciation of analysis and analyses. Thank you. I was getting into real problems there, wasn't I, BG? Thank you, my friend. And so, have you ever stopped to think of the difference between these ten words? You've never mentioned in your video. There, ha, and it won't let me produce all of these. There, mate, buddy, ha, yes, so let's see, to me, well, I can do these two. These two are easy. Mate, mate is street English, very estuary, um, this word buddy, uh, very American. I, I'm, I'll have a look for it. I, I have a feeling I, 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 ha I had a go at a video like this. Maybe I never made it. Huh. Try again, VG. It won't let me uh, read the rest of it. And thanks for answering my question about Morph and its friends. My pleasure. And the question between film and its friends. And for learn. Hi, for learn. Thank you for answering. Could you tell me if it's correct to say discuss about or is it discuss something? Would I use about? I, I don't like to discuss about. Yeah, what were you discussing? We were discussing the weather. We were discussing the situation. Um, what were you I were discussing about? No, don't use about. Lose the about. You're much better off without it for learn. And Mohammed Albunaga. A shriveled face is a sign of a hard-working person. By the way, glad you addressed Egypt in this lesson. Okay, thank you. Uh, somewhere I've never visited, I'd love to go. And what's the difference between mention, bring up, touch upon, name, cite, quote, refer to, and remark? Mainly the first three. <coughs> so to mention something. Okay, yes, um, is to say something about it. Whereas I think to bring up, you bring up a topic in a situation. I think bring up, you probably talk about it more. You mention something in passing, yeah? He mentioned that he was going up, uh, going away next week. Um, he brought up the topic of the terrible mistake I had made. Yeah, um, it's to uh, bring something into the conversation, to put it into the conversation, and maybe you talk about it for uh, a much longer time. To touch on or to touch upon, it means it, it's very similar to mention. We talked about many things, and we even touched upon uh, philosophy and economics. So. There was a little bit of conversation about it, but not a great deal. I, you see, I think, yeah, these subjects were mentioned, yeah? I think your name was mentioned in um, the conversation, yeah? Whereas I think normally as well you touch upon a subject, but if you bring something up, you deliberately insert it into the conversation because you want to talk about it. Um, to name. Okay, you name somebody. This is the person that did this, yeah? Um, or you used name to give an example. Okay, to cite and to quote are both meaning to both mean to use somebody else's words, yeah? Um, to cite the words of Descartes, I th I think therefore I am. To refer to. Okay, um, hmm, okay, th th this is, it, it's sort of like, um, this is an arrow going towards, uh, to suggest that somebody goes in a direction, but in this conversation thing, yeah, we referred to the, um, work that you did yesterday, hmm, yes, 
this words this phrase is slightly different and a remark is just something you would could say he remarked on the uh, good weather yeah he mentioned yeah but touch upon the the the, the conversations going and suddenly it touches upon one thing okay i hope that's helped vg it's midnight there in Spain. Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you, VG. So, if you use right to be a synonym of downright, can I say he's a right smart boy? Yes, you can. It's pretty informal. This right word's pretty informal. The, the roads are right dangerous, very definitely. And, by the way, what's the difference between road and roadway, causeway and thoroughfare? OK, I think a road. A road goes from one place to another, and I think nowadays a road is for cars and vehicles. I think the roadway talks about the physical road itself. Yeah, the surface of the roadway was in very bad condition. Yeah, either side of the roadway there were trees. A causeway. A causeway, I think this is a geographical feature. Um, I think very often it's a, a, a place where you can go from one place to another, normally across water, yeah? So a road across water, um, I'm thinking of the Giant's Causeway, yeah, where you can, the idea was you could walk from uh, Ireland to uh, Scotland on it. And a thoroughfare, a thoroughfare is normally a big main road, yeah, the main road in town. Yeah, if you have a village, probably there's one big thoroughfare where the main road goes through the town, and that's the idea. And, ha, Mohammed, hi Mohammed. Mint condition is the opposite of dilapidated or derelict. I wouldn't, you don't need the word condition. Both dilapidated and derelict talk about condition. It's often used with cars, and I've come across another one, but I guess this one is just for describing cars. Yes, a clunker. You're thinking about this American cash for clunkers scheme. Yeah, clunk, 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 as it goes down the road. And thank you for answering my muddle through question, no problem. Lol, you thought there were going to be just a few more comments, but you got a great load of them. It happens. OK, pot and pan. It's to do with the depth. And let's see if it'll let me good. So what's the difference between baking tray, baking tin, baking pan, baking sheet, baking mould, form, cookie sheet? So put the batter in the baking tray. Put the batter in the baking tin. I would say they're probably the same. I think the tin is probably slightly smaller and goes on the oven tray. Put the batter into the baking pan. I would say no, no different. OK, the baking sheet is normally the paper, this greaseproof paper. It's sort of opaque and whitish that you put inside it. Um, Pour the batter into the mould. OK, so the tray, tin and pan are all flat. Yeah, I think the mould can be, have many different forms. It could be deep, yeah, into the form. I think the form is like um, the, the, the mould, but I would use the form. And put, pour the batter into the cookie sheet. I would say onto the cookie sheet. The cookie sheet's this flat greaseproof paper that I mentioned earlier. Pour the batter into the sheet pan. I don't know this phrase, sheet pan. It sounds very American to me. Um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure about sheet pan. But pan, tray, tin, flat. I think a tin might be higher. The mould definitely has got a shape to, to make it. And Mascro Benisca. Hi, Mascro. Your explanations are always highly exhaustive and full of inspiring metaphors that I keep toying with the concepts that you brilliantly elucidate without the D. Delucidate. Delucidate. Yes, you could. Without being able to completely acquire such an expressive skill like the one of a real native speaker. I would probably say like that of a real native speaker, though. 
precisely because I cannot properly employ the collocations contained in your skillful delucidations in the phrase. Um, it is just like rummaging with a U in my pockets looking for money when I'm skint. I guess my brain is like a sieve and I hope that you will turn a blind eye on that. Notwithstandingly, doesn't need the L-Y, it's already an adverb. Notwithstanding, I will go on watching your tip-top lessons and more enthusiastically and passionately than ever. Thanks sir again for thrilling us. Uh, to learn through your stupendous and eloquent eloquent construction style. So, I think I would say thanks, sir, for thrilling us about learning through your stupendous and eloquent uh, sentence con style uh, when constructing sentences. This is very good, uh, Mascro. Um, it's always going to be difficult in a foreign language unless uh, unless it's your native tongue. Yeah, over years and years and years, you will get slowly better, but it's a very difficult thing. Okay, and VG. After we got onto that website, some problems started to crop up. Good. More riots have been cropping up as the price of petrol increases. Good. This is definitely crop up. And. I was having a wonderful year until the COVID-19 pandemic cropped up and killed many people. By the way, it's been two years already. My last day being free before quarantine was 13th March 2020, Friday. And that's today. Wow. OK. And Mr. Music Mohammed, Musical Mohammed, um, Music Man. Thank you very much. I will listen later. And Sergio Ace Acevedo. I don't whine because you helped me very much to understand your beautiful language. Thanks. Okay. And heh, put a sock in it. Yeah. Lol. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the music. Derelict. Decrepit. Dilapidated. Dilapidated. And Elmira Kromskaya. That elaboration made the feature the feature very explicit thank you for your spectacular input which is admirable for both its detailed attribution and sheer pronunciation thank you Elmira and Mohammed this is these are great words it is the name of a so the name it is the name of a song by Hakim thank you Mohammed and Boris, thank you a lot, teacher. I have had that time clause down for a long time. Finally, I know what to use. Absolutely, Boris. Time clause plus a, plus a present symbol. And, OK, Raptor. Hello, I'm French and I love to learn new English words. Your channel has helped me a lot with a, ple with a plethora of distinguished vocabulary. Thanks a lot. So, thank you, uh, Raptor Jesus. And Marcelo. How, hi, Marcelo. Wow. I've been looking up on internet. Yeah. I would probably without the... I've been looking on internet to understand this word, but I couldn't find any source to help me out with the explanation until I came across this video, and it resulted very useful. Now I understand the meaning and how to use it. Thanks a lot. My pleasure, Marcelo. And AK. Hello, sir. What are the differences between interrupt, interfere, intrude, invade, and intervene? So, to interrupt, you interrupt when two people are, are talking and something is going on and you interrupt, you stop that to um, do something else. To interfere, this is to take action in something that is not your responsibility. It's not something that uh, you should uh, be putting your nose in. To intrude. 
you intrude on somebody's privacy yeah you go where you shouldn't yeah you ask questions that are private questions and this is the idea of intrude um, to invade well first the invade is normally military action um, I've got a, uh, a joke sort of about this, in, uh, which I will make for next week. Um, to invade somebody's privacy, yeah? Um, th th this gives the idea of going somewhere by force, yeah? Um, yeah, and this is an invasion of privacy. Yes, we use it metaphorically, but it's talking about uh, doing something by force, yeah? Against the will of other people and to intervene okay to intervene is uh, um, to uh, try to stop something from happening or to stop something going on or to take part in it because you think that this is the best thing to do but it's the line between interfere and intervene is uh, very difficult for example, I'm sure Mr. Putin would say he's intervening in the Ukraine. And I'm sure the US would say he's interfering in the Ukraine. OK, so intervene is justified. Heisman. After the presidential election where the current ex-public prosecutor general was elected, those who chose the other candidate ensconced him in the position of opposition party representative. Good use of uh, ens ensconce. Engine, high engine. At last I sloughed off my accumulated, never used junk. Junk is uncountable. It was a very difficult task to do it. It is done, or it was done, with some regrets. The rest of my unused things have, plural, things, have to wait. Death. Wait for death, I suppose. <laughs> okay, that's good engine, thanks. Raju, please let me know. Adjective of intercession. Intercessional? I would probably say intercessional. Um, his intercessional intervention. His intercessional attitude. I think I would go for intercessional, but it's pretty unusual. And Douglas Russ, I'm morphed. Ha, great to have you, Douglas. Thank you. And bravo. Lovely to have you. Okay, Navanitha. I dropped my friend home yesterday, but his home, house, houses look, no, but his house looked so Spartan, or looked, looked so Spartan, was so Spartan to see only from the outside. So, but his house looked very Spartan from the outside. After I went in, what I realised was unbelievable. It had aesthetics of creativity, colour, des design and structure. But So you're going to have to think about this look like. Um, but his house looked like it was very Spartan from the outside. His house looked very Spartan from the outside. And hair. Huh. OK, far from the madding crowd. Hi, P. Great to have you. OK, yeah, I think you got more sleep last night. That's great. I'm reveling in the reading of Far From the Madding Crowd, Thomas Hardy. Reader, Alex, Alexander Henry I Swear English. I'm sorry, most of these books, I've only just done the first chapter. Because as, as you notice, these, <laughs> these chapters take quite a time. Yeah, and um, well, full audio books, no, but the first chapter gives you a taste of them. Yeah, you are like the so Smith does. Thank you, Smith. Um, you are like the English version of Ram Dev Baba. I should look up Ram Dev Baba. I'm interested to know who he is. Could somebody please tell me? And Giliola, great to have you, Giliola. Wanting to go back in history. The most sumptuous life was held in the royal palace of France. 
In the rest of Europe, even the aristocrats led a Spartan life. A nice word. I'm glad you like it. Good example, Giliola. And Roland. Hi, Roland. Sleeping rough is prevalent in this metropolis. Homeless people have no other option but to sleep in Spartan living conditions. The local authority is in the in a losing battle when it bans them from bans them from staying at bus stations and local parks. Okay, so from staying in, when it bans them from staying in local, in bus stations and local parks. Desperate times cause for de call for desperate measures. Homeless people often occupy vacant houses. The draconian law does not help to solve their situations. Local government should provide shelter for them. Good English, Roland. Well done. And hello, hi AK, great to have you. And AK, he has, ha, had he been carrying all the impedimenta, he would not have had to borrow them from someone, someone else. Yes, yeah. Okay, that's good. I keep, I forget keeping, I f keeping. I forget keeping. I forget if I've got my the impedimenta in my bag. Could you please check if I've got them? Keep keep is more long term, AK. Doesn't work. Uh I forgot if I have the impedimenta. I forgot if I've got I forgot if I put the impedimenta in the bag. Could you check if I put them in? Okay, and Fran. Hi Fran again. The teacher doesn't condone the use of phones in his class. We don't condone the Russian invasion of in Ukraine. Good Fran. And when she's packing, thinking that they they are impedimenta. So when she's packing, she's thinking that these things are impedimenta or th w when she's packing she's thinking that this impedimenta or these impedimenta are actually unnecessary when she's packing she's th she's thinking that these impedimenta are actually unnecessary so thank you fran this one has had a huge number of videos of views, sorry, not videos. Good morning, Manji. Great to see you. Good morning, sir. Being a great fan of Asterix and Obelix, I can't help mentioning Impedimenta, the matriarchal wife of the village chief, who makes her people carry her things and other Impedimenta while visiting her home at Lutetia. <laughs> That's very good. I love that, Manji. Thank you for that uh, reference. It's a great one, Impedimenta. It's also a great name as well. But the names in Asterix and Obelix are very good. They're very funny. Hi, P. Good morning, P. 7.27 a.m. Good morning, Alex. Did you sleep well? I slept quite well. Did you have a good night's rest? I think I got the joke because it wasn't the same consomme. He was doing a pussy kiss. Exactly. Slurp, slurp. N'est-ce pas? N'est-ce pas? Exactly. Ah, ah. Swoon. Ah, ah. Do you know this one? I met a girl who was willing. Now I'm using penicillin. That's very good indeed. I like that. Nice little rhyme. And P. Bonjour. Have a delightful day. The same to you as well. AK. Criticising those in power is enshrined in my de democratic right. Very good English, AK. MJ. Hi, MJ. Congratulations on your silver button. Thank you. And Raj. Thank you, Alex. Wonderful explanation. So good to see you here, Raj. And good to know that. Ha, bellend, woof, yes, be careful of this word. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a... If you call someone this, you'll end up in a fight. <laughs> okay, and Azan, hi Azan, great to have you. Thanks for watching. And let's see, 808P, hi P. 
Generally speak, generally speaking, tr when travelling, girls have more impedimenta than guys. Tons of clothes, accessories, etc. Now I try to limit the stuff. Seven t-shirts, two or three pairs of trousers, three to five dresses, two cardigans, two coats, five hats, one extra handbag, one clutch purse, three pairs of shoes, toiletries, at least five pairs of earrings, three necklaces and five bracelets, and my painting paraphernalia, two or three sketchbooks, watercolour, acrylics, pencils, felt pens, you see, when I travel, when I travel, especially when I go a long way away, I try and take just one bag, and anything I don't, ha I don't have, I just buy it. Yeah, if I really need something, I can go and buy it. Uh, it make it because all that impedimenta can be, it, it can be a real problem. Okay. 8.42p. I forgot to add, I would be taking a camera too, and scarves plus more painting stuff, pastels and inks, to add up to the impedimenta. To add, I would probably say to add onto the pedimenta. But that's great. I love it. That's very funny. Um, and hi P again. I felt the teacher's definition of the word willy gave rise to impedimenta in my brain and imagination. Be careful with etc. the male productive organ. It was a hilarious turn on because he'd not used the actual uh, used the usual three letter word. As a result my fertile imagination came up with a brood of bouncing babies at one go. Ten at least I believe. The problem is I get into trouble with YouTube when mummy YouTube hears me use words that it doesn't approve of. Yeah and um, it's just easier not for me not to use them yeah as you see when I started out I was uh, very cavalier about it yeah um, but nowadays <laughs> I try not to offend people's sensibilities yeah um, <laughs> because the, the problem is that there are all types of people who listen to these videos and that's the reason why um, you'll <laughs> you will hear me swear like a trooper in real life and P. Another one. There was a little girl with a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. And when she was good, she was very, very good. And when she was bad, she was better. I love it. That's really good. Thank you, P. I love this one. This one's uh, quite an old fashioned one, but I love it. And P. Aya. I just love this word. Does it have the same formality as the word wrath? That's another word I love. I'm looking forward to the live stream. Yes, there will be a live stream tonight. Aya and Roth. I think Aya is probably a little more formal than Roth. Um, I think Roth or Wrath. Wrath, Roth, Wrath. Well, both pronunciations. I think Wrath is a word that's coming in. I think Aya is probably a word that's on its way out. Ha. Huh. Okay, making promises that you don't uh, fulfill. Okay, hi Leffy. Yes, a similar tactic to get women. Well, what can I say? And Lukash. Yes, I like apples called Spartan, red and tasty. Yeah, Spartan apples. Hi Lukash. And P. She she never listened. She never liked children. Whenever she saw us playing in the garden, we were greeted with withering looks on her part, and they generally lasted a couple of minutes. Good. And wax and wane. Okay, you, you're looking up the videos that go with, with the question. Hi, Zara. In my impedimenta, I had a blue t-shirt like yours, but can be a... Nice set with blue eyes. That's so. That can go well with. Let me just write that. That can go well with blue eyes. That'll sound much better, Zara. And a DT. OK, hi Aditi, great to see you. Politicians make promises that wither on the vine. Yes, 
after they've been elected. This is this is the collocation, this is the expression. Something withers on the vine. And P. Wayne, hesitation, curtail is out. Wayne and Ebb and Wither are far too poetic for politicians. They deserve shrink. It is the association of these words with the word vine which make the choice difficult. Uh, okay, one wane, two wither, or shrink. First they wane, then they shrink. Okay, P, the, the, the phrase is to wither on the vine. Yeah, um, yeah this, is, it, it, this is the idiom that we use, and that's why it's the best answer. I guess they could wane on the vine or shrink on the vine as well. Um, I think Ebb, no, but very definitely. And let's see, we need to refresh again. My, my, what a lot of comments. If you enjoyed the video, give it a rating, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you soon. But we've got some more comments first. Okay, you see, I got that bit over while we were waiting. Ah, yes, very definitely quite a few. And, Zara, in most religions, they ask followers to have a Spartan lifestyle. Good English, Zara. Sheed. Impedimenta. Well, as I'm a single one, as I'm single, you don't need one, as I am single or a single, I don't have a lot of impedimenta to bring with me when I travel. Just the essential. Very good. And teacher, I couldn't find one live and didn't get the difference between equity equability and equality. Okay, so, I won live. Well, um, so, equity. Well, firstly, equity, we use this to talk about stocks and shares, the equity market, the stocks and shares market. Or, um, so, th it's the amount that you own. But also, equity can talk about fairness, yeah, um, equitability. Equitability talks about fairness. So, I think equity we can use about finance, about assets, yeah. Um, uh, when you go bankrupt, you will lose all your equity in everything, yeah. Um, whereas equity also, fairness, equity. Willie. So a judge must decide uh, equitab equitably. So notice, equity has more meanings. Equitable just means fair. What's a reasonable balance? And equality means the two things are the same. Yeah, they have the same level. Yeah, um, equality is more about treating people equally. Yeah, you may... Uh -huh, um, and maybe a good question is equi if uh, equality means equitability. So equality between men and women. But men and women are different and have different needs. So maybe what is equitable for a man, uh, uh, if you give a woman the, the same, it, it's uh, maybe not. What is equitable for a woman may not be appropriate for a man. So equitable, what is fair given the circumstances? Whereas equality, I think equality has more the idea of three lines, is exactly equal to. Yeah, and Jeanette Lee Luciano, hi, how about this? I text my ex saying, you know what makes me sad, hoping that he'd say, so, say, what? So I could tell him, I wish I'd picked up my necklace one day when it broke off. But this response, his response was, don't let people control your emotions. Sound like good advice, right? Well, it depends if he's trying to control your emotions. Except I wasn't looking for advice, I was talking, and I wasn't, and it wasn't even about another human. Hmm. Also, my belief system says life is hard, care about humanity, and some people will have a personal, I think we need an E, effect on you. 
So to me, that advice was sanctimonious. Why? Because he's a New Age vegan while I'm a Christian. I don't walk about preaching Bible quotes with no context or without the acknowledgement of the chaos and evil in the world. I never met a person I never met a person push another person. I never met a person who would push another person to detach from reality like him. And I think I found the right word to describe him. Here. LDC or IDC, I don't know, I don't care what you believe, IDC, I don't care what you believe. Your lifestyle is a style and I'm not impressed, I don't care, but I, but can I just tell you about my day? That would be cool, sanctimonious. Okay, now I understand it, Jeanette Lee. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, he, he, he's being sanctimonious, very definitely. Navanitha. In a halfway through the travelling, so halfway through the trip, he got to know that he had forgotten to pick up the fishing impedimenta, the impedimenta of fishing equipment and makeup kits and some necessary things. Okay, so halfway through the trip, or halfway through the journey, he got to know, he realised that he'd forgotten to pick up uh, the impedimenta of fishing equipment and makeup kits and other necessary things. Thank you, Navanitha. Rizgar. Have you prepared all the impedimenta of camping? Herbs, spices, pots, pans, saucepans and drinks. Good work, Rizgar. And let's refresh again. So just bear me, bear with me for a second while this uh, comes up. Wow, we're up to 51 minutes so far on this one. Let's see what it says. And OK, Navanitha. What's the difference between impedimenta and paraphernalia? <laughs> OK, that's a good question. Um, let's see. You, do you know the verb impede, Navanitha? If something impedes, it makes things more difficult. Yeah. Whereas paraphernalia are all the things associated with something. But maybe the paraphernalia, it it's, uh, doesn't occupy a lot of space. So in the idea of paraphernalia, all the things associated with the, with it. Impedimenta, it talks more about baggage, yeah? Impedimenta is all the paraphernalia that you need. But also impedimenta has a connotation of large suitcases or large amounts of things that you have to carry. Okay, so impedimenta, it impedes your progress. It makes your progress more more difficult. Whereas paraphernalia, just all the things you need, yeah, which huh, may go into a small bag. He got all his paraphernalia in a small bag. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.